folks welcome to another episode in this modern trad series here on my woodsman's finest channel this is max coming at you here from the edges of the austrian alps i want to talk about something today that has probably saved archery for me altogether i shot split finger um, longbow class austrian 3d tournaments with self-built cedar arrows for pretty much 15 to 20 years that was fine for me so there, there came the point when this instinctive shooting day form where one day I would just couldn't miss and the next day um, I couldn't hit a barn door from inside so to say um, it just was so frustrating to me and I didn't know what to do anymore so my bows were hanging up on the wall for a few years I guess and it was just too frustrating I didn't know where to um, at what point of my shot and my entire approach to archery I should come in to fix it and one day I was watching the push movie as so many of us have on YouTube and all of a sudden all of this rejection of mine against three under aiming all of the stuff that I felt was cheating and not you know just not true in a way um, I just came over just overcame the stubbornness my romanticized view of instinctive archery and such and, and I still think that a lot of people can shoot very accurately that way but they have a different mindset and are more able to focus but with my borderline ADHD mind um, I just have a huge problem looking at something and just pulling back and hitting there's too much stuff going on in my head there's too many questions that I'm asking um, throughout the entire shot the entire um, shot cycle and then especially at the release so I just received these limbs some very inexpensive and super high quality carbon foam limbs from SF they don't make them anymore I think carbon leads um, on one of my the longest ILF riser I actually have a 19 inch Gillo Ghost from Italy and yeah this is how my archery has changed I shoot one piece hybrid longbows with aluminum arrows and feathers and I shoot to a totally teched out still single string um, no sights and, um, and all that but I still shoot these teched out bows with tread veins and um, of course completely tuned arrows and I love that and what has helped me most on the way, except for the push, Joel Turner with his shot IQ, Tom Clum Sr. from RMS Gear with his um, body mechanics behind archery, was installing a clicker. And this bow doesn't have a clicker yet. And if you found yourself somehow in the story that I was just telling, then maybe you just want to come along and watch me put a DIY clicker on here. The clicker has two specific advantages. For one, um, it is a draw check, a draw length check. So that means I never have to raise the question, do I have the same draw length every single time and does my arrow leave the bow with the same energy behind it every single time? So that question is taken out of the equation. The second thing that it does for me is while I'm without a, a clicker I'm back here and I'm aiming and I'm in my back and all that but then there's always this shot anticipation and over 20 years of archery I have learned to ignore it as much or so much that my pre-ignition movements how Joel Turner calls it are rather small but that's not every day like that and that's not necessarily in the case the case when I have audience at a, at a tournament or when I'm shooting the, at an animal or when my day form changes which is the problem I had with traditional archery so here what it takes away is after I've done all of this I can just 100% con concentrate on my form I have established my aim it doesn't matter if there's an animal there a target a 3d animal um, a foam target or a, a rotten stomp I'm just you know deciding to put my tip of my arrow somewhere and after that if that's done all I have to think about is pulling since I have this new bow that I'm extremely happy with, 64 inches, smooth pulling, very fast. I was super lucky to get a pair of 42 pound at a 25 riser um, ILF limbs. So at this 19 inch riser, they had 48 at my draw, they're 50. 
and I couldn't be happier. I'm launching hunting weight 570 grain arrows out of here, four fledge helical tread veins with my BART treatment that I have a video out. Keep an eye out for that video. Um, brass inserts 100 grain, 125 points, so 225 up front. Um, Self-made rest from leather with some um, with some velcro on it. A bolt on the side here with some velcro to adjust my center shot. Eagle flight um, quiver, but I'm gonna exchange that for a super stiff compound quiver. Um, second hand riser was 200 euro instead of 400. These limbs were 89 instead of 300 or 250 whatever. Um, so I'm super lucky, very happy with this high value bow. So check your local classifieds um, for what you can find. And the string is by JS Custom Strings out of Australia. I'm extremely happy with these. Um, he's doing these translucent um, servings in the middle that are so good looking. Um, and put some Dyneema mufflers on it and I put some Velcro on the, the limbs as well. So I just wanted to throw that out there because when I watch an archery video I always want to know what people are shooting. By the way the tab is a self-made um, Kydex tab that I've made a while ago with some um, Cordoman on it. By the way, shooting a fixed crawl. Let's do this. Let's get this stuff out of here. I found this gentleman's suggestion um, after I wasn't really creative enough to come up with something that clicks. He realized that regular measuring tapes or something that you could um, buy pretty much everywhere or everybody had at home. So, what we need is measuring tape. This one is about a centimeter, maybe half an inch wide, which is rather narrow for measuring tape. Velcro. So these come from our home hardware here in, in Austria, and this is just to dampen things down and protect your limbs a little bit. And we need a pair of scissors. Duct tape is very important here, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let you know why. One of these guys, that's just a little pocket torch so to say some very light binding material this is um, tiger thread this is actually used for stitching leather and I like using orange because this entire bowl is kind of um, a black and orange theme and I'm gonna use some bank line here for our connection between the clicker and the limb this is very thin not as thin as um and not as thick and expensive especially as the D loop material people use um, Usually, and last but not least, some black insulation tape. So all together what's here on the table is something you can really easily um, use other material like the inside of, of paracord for this. You can use a reg regular lighter for this. Everybody has something like that at home, like completely like non-stretching nylon cord duct tape. Everybody has. This is not even a dollar at home hardware. Um, you probably have a bunch of measuring tapes that you can sacrifice. So first of all, I just gonna Cool, I have a measuring tape here. I just gonna measure something like This is one two Three inches here From cutting so much measuring tape these scissors are not really sharp anymore. I'm gonna cut About one two two and a half inches of this measuring tape off and then I'm gonna cut little pieces off here that are about half an inch pieces. One, two, three, and let's do a fourth one as well. Like a foot of this stuff. So I also cut another foot of this bank line stuff here. And last but not least, I knew I forgot something we need. A sharpie. All right, y'all. It is the night after summer or like winter solstice, actually. So it's quarter to three, and it's slightly getting darker. So I hope we're gonna get through this before the light is too terrible. But from here on out, things are pretty straightforward. And about half an inch from the end. First of all, I'm gonna round the ends off a little bit just to make it look a little bit better. And then about half an inch, or like a little bit under that, I'm actually cutting two tiny little notches. One on each side. There you go. 
So after that's done, I just take my Sharpie and to let it dry a little bit while I prepare all the stuff, I'm just gonna go ahead and I just blacken this piece of white measuring tape. Usually they're white or yellow or something like that. It's easy to see when you work with it in the shop. But of course, out and about and especially on your, our dark limbs usually, even if they're wooden limbs, black is usually not as disturbing as this kind of white. So here we go, I hope you can see that. It's just blackened. Let's get the bow up here. And let's quickly talk about where I want to place my clicker. So on these recurve limbs there is a very working part in here and then there's the recurves that open up a little bit but right in between at the end here of the working part this is where I usually put my clickers. So if you if you pull the bow you can see that there's a part that is up here that does not really work too much but it, it stays rather straight so this is where I'm putting my clicker and what I do here I can you know clean it up a little bit before it's gonna do for me today um, usually I would just rub some some alcohol over it or something like that I'm just gonna go ahead take this piece of velcro here and I'm just gonna stick it up in the middle of the limb right up in this area that I decided is gonna be where I want my clicker Mounting it rather further up on your limb rather than down here also means that there is less string hanging around. Um, I thought about also mounting clickers on the bottom of my riser maybe, but then I have to live with the fact that there is about a foot and a half of string hanging around. So I'm not 100% sure about that. Alright. First of all what I want to do, cut about, say, 10 inches of my binding material here. And I just want to do an overhand knot. One like that with a loop. Alright. What I do then is I form a loop here in my, I hope you can see that, I form a loop here in my material, in my bank line. And I just take this, um, this overhand knot that I just did and I tie it, whoopsie, I tie it around just like that. I hope that's visible. So, here we go. I just made one knot around this loop. And then I'm gonna do another one on the other side by just flipping it over, tying another overhand knot, and making sure that it lands on the opposite side. Pull that fairly tight, just giving a tug. And what I do then is I take my blackened piece of measuring tape and from the outside, the black facing side, I just loop this around like that so that the black back line, blank line is actually fitting into these notches just like that black on black and a dark forest I hope this is visible how I'm doing this if you're concerned about this construction having it looped around like that you can always go ahead and just put a little bit of insulation tape around this thing. Take the two ends of the bank line. My focus is really leaving me in the dark here. Taking the two ends of the bank line and just pull them to two opposite directions. And what happens is it just pulls itself tight. I hope that was somehow understandable. So once that is done, all I have to do, and we, we repeat that kind of knot a lot, um, I'm just tying overhand knots on both sides from here. I just go on one side, I just did one, then I turn it over to the other side. I'm gonna do another one on the opposite side again. And it's easier the more 
um, room you leave yourself of course and then I'm gonna tie one more so all together it's four overhand knots on opposite sides okay so once that is done I just go ahead cut first one end Careful, mushroom that over. Then I cut the other end of this orange thread. And finally, I take the bank line, do the same. This is of course a lot less hustle if you have a nice work table at home. Just gonna seal the end of this thing. So now we've got this tight little loop around our piece of measuring tape. Next up what we're gonna do, that now that this is prepared, We've got our velcro piece up here, so we've got the location of our clicker. So now I'm gonna take a roll of duct tape and I'm just gonna rip a strip off that is about half an inch wide. A pretty long one. Usually I have a table, a clamp, I clamp the whole thing to the table, it doesn't move. But I've done so many of these in this kind of setting and it's beautiful out here so I thought I'm just gonna do it out here, whatever. So we've got this long piece of half an inch wide duct tape and first of all what I'm going to do is I go across up here once. And this is the moment where I'm going to switch the camera angle so you see exactly what I'm doing on here. So first of all what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of measuring tape here, put it on top of this piece of duct tape and, um, and velcro that we put up here and we're gonna make sure that we get one tight wrap of duct tape over this to secure it press it tight on both sides and here we go so now we want this thing to click but it in order to click the, the tape is not enough it needs something to really press it on there and kind of give it um, a hard surface and a hard edge to press against like this with my finger here so I found the easiest thing to do is to cut little pieces of this measuring tape off and while wrapping the stuck tape around several times I'm always trying to come up very close and then put one piece of this measuring tape on here and put a wrapping over. So this is hard to show but in this case it's just important that you get the idea. So I'm gonna repeat this a few times now. With pressure I go around this is probably a good moment usually to just unstring the bow so the string is not in the way but I'm just winging stuff so and I'm gonna put another shim so to say in here give it another wrap after I go over this this is when I actually put a little bit of tension on it press it down on both sides and let's do this do this two times more it's very important that the edges of these little pieces are always lining up so they're basically building this or building up on top of each other as this hard surface or edge that the clicker is gonna click against so to say so rather than these metal parts on the uh, the clickers you can buy you're just forming this hard surface yourself oh and now it actually starts raining a little bit great stuff and this is another real advantage of this entire setup including the bow here that 
Everything on the spool, the limbs, the riser, the veins, everything is completely weather resistant. Okay, so now we've got all of these four pieces on here and they're wrapped in duct tape that is by itself not having a lot of stretch, which is very important and this is why I'm not doing this with insulation tape. I've tried it before, but insulation tape is too stretchy and if I'm trying to click the entire, um, the entire insulation tape is just lifting off. There you go. So I give it a couple more wraps just to make sure that this stuff is on here very tight and doesn't have any stretch to it. So I'm just building up this duct tape layer, so to say. All right. This is maybe a little bit thicker than I usually go, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so now that we're done with that, what I want to do is I just want to mask it off a little bit because this doesn't look very nice, right? So I'm using insulation tape, black insulation tape. After fighting with this insulation tape for a little bit, I finally got it loose. What I'm doing now is I'm just going slightly underneath to cover up this ugly duct tape and slightly above. Just put a nice layer of very stealthy insulation tape off on top of this duct tape. And as you can see the stuff has a lot of stretch. So it's not ideal to hold the measuring tape pieces on there, but it's good to kind of seal everything off. And this is not the most beautiful job I've done because it's on camera and it's showing off to everybody what I came up with, but it is rather stealthy as you can see. I know. There's always something, when you shoot a clicker, there's always going to be something on your top limb. What can you do? Can you do? All right, let's see if the whole thing actually worked. Let's just take our little bank line here. By leaving it very long, it actually is rather soft to engage. If you make it a very short um, piece of this measuring tape, what you're going to find is it's going to be very hard to overcome, and that's again not really good for your form. So I'm very happy with um, this about two inch long piece. Gives me actually a very soft, very noticeable um, and very um, audible clicker. And now we're coming to the last part of this whole thing. So I have this long piece of bank line hanging off my clicker here now. And what I usually do is, um, and I've done this on this string here already because it had a clicker mounted. Um, I do something that you I know from Aaron Snyder and his um, Kifaro, Kifaro cast videos. Rather than just um, doing the classic thing where you stick in the end of your line on the clicker just through your string, um, adjust it while you're shooting and then cut it off and mushroom it over with some um, um, using a lighter. That is something you can do. My problem with that method is just that um, the string is twisting and whenever I twist or untwist or change my brace height, the entire thing is just curling around the string and like it's engaging the clicker too early, too late, blah, blah, blah. There's just a very easy method to find adjust my clicker if I'm doing it this way. So I've, what I've done on the string here already is what you saw me doing before on the other side of the bank line. It's just a couple of overhand knots alternating on both sides, creating these two little knots that are leaving this little space in between here. So since I don't really know how long my clicker has to be, I do the same thing again where I'm basically forming an, a loop around my string this time with this bank line. Just twisting it a couple times so it stays on here for a moment while I'm just taking another piece of this very thin leather thread and feeding it around this time because in this case I can't just um, wrap it over and I make an overhand not very very simple and I just pull it reasonably tight very close to these two little knots here and I can slide it up a tad just like that so there's a little bit of space the thing is not in, completely tight around the string but it has a little bit of air and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side it's great with light and a non-moving bow, but we're gonna get this done. Gonna do another one on this side. 
And the whole idea behind these knots is that they're tight and they're keeping the loop where I want it, but they're not tight and like not three or four on each side to where I can't actually adjust the whole thing anymore. Okay, let's do another one over here. And this is two on each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this tight. Just like that. I take my knife, hold the knot while I cut this thing. Cut. I actually got the stump to put this on. Make sure this is a little bit raised. Try not to burn through my string and all these other good, all the other good stuff, so to say. And just mushroom this over. But try not to stick to the bank line. And then I'm just gonna tuck on the other side a little bit to make sure that I still got a tight knot. Cut the other side away from my string. See that I've got this little tag here actually standing up a little bit away from the string. So I can also use this lighter away from the string and mushroom that over. All right, so now we're pretty much done installing the clicker. All we have to do at this point <clears throat> is sizing it. Oh man, so many pockets. There you go. You would think I'm always putting stuff in the same pockets just for <clears throat> making sure. I have bought, I think, four clickety clickers from uh, the big um, online archery shop where everybody buys them. I'm switching bowls all the time. I lose screws. Um, as soon as I lose a screw, I'm here in Austria. Everything is metric. Every, over there, everything is whatever. Um, so I can't even find the little screws to replace them, blah, blah, blah. I got to the point where I was like, okay, I just gonna like come up with a DIY clicker. I had this great input from the one gentleman on the push Facebook group. Um, shout out. If you're not on there, go on there. People are nerding out all the time. Modern trad, traditional archery in general, and the tone is very good. Okay, so just check out the push on Instagram, on Facebook, etc. Um, and of course the pack, the Push Archery Center of Knowledge, where there's a bunch of amazing courses. We are living in a truly great time of modern trad, traditional archery, etc. Hashtag trad life. Um, at, at the same point, if you like what I did here, check out my Instagram page, Woodsman's Finest. I'm a carver, leather worker, and a knife maker. So um, if you like what I'm doing here, I just came back from a trip from, um, to Canada, canoeing, solo canoeing up north, um, bow hunting a little bit as well, for, for grouse and rabbit at least. And I also just came back from a trip afterwards to Japan. So there's always stuff happening on my channel. So it's Instagram, Woodsman's Finest, um, Facebook, Woodsman's Finest, and of course, woodsmansfinest.com, where you can buy my stuff. Plug, over. But um, I'm doing this for a living. So, when I size this thing, it's very important not to be over ambitious. Um, whenever I size my clickers, this is when I pull perfectly, and everything is just a dream, and then I shot for two hours or something like that, and I cannot get for the life of mine through that clicker anymore. So, it's very important for me when I, when I size the clicker that I'm just honest. So like I'm just shooting how I'm shooting as if there was no clicker on, right? So in this case, um, I have no idea how long this thing is. So I'm just doing my, my true form and having a look. Wow, there is a lot that needs to come off. So what I do in this case, since I have this loop here, I just gonna take one end we propped up here a little bit. Hold the knot rather close to the string. And then I'm just going to pull on the working end, so to say, so on the loose end, until I feel like I get closer. Then I'm moving the knot on the loop, the one that is on the bank line. I'm moving it a bit away from the string again and open it up so it can actually swivel. Um, freely around the string without actually popping underneath or above one of those little knots. Let's do the same again. As if there was no clicker on, I'm just doing my, my shot sequence. Back, anchor, expansion, nothing happening. Still need to go like a couple of inches. Again, very important not, just, not to just pull 
especially not the, the wrong end to rip the clicker off, or break it or something, but rather just hold the knot, let it freely run through, you can move it away a little bit. So the knot has to be tight, but it doesn't have to be overly tight where I can't easily adjust it anymore. Back, anchor, expansion, and we're getting very close. So now we're doing a rough adjustment, and then I'm going to show you a fine adjustment that can still be done even after you cut the tag end. Last one, let's see. Back. It's already very tight. Last one. Maybe a little bit much. So you're just like working your words uh, working yourself towards this click during the um, transfer to hold phase, so to say. Again, one, back, anchor. That's what I wanna. That's what I wanna hear. During pushing my scapula down and in, this is when a click should happen, and I'm just gonna cut it there now. My form's not gonna get better. Let's take this thing, the tag end, don't cut the wrong end, that would suck. And yeah, with this explanation and all that stuff, it's taking a little bit longer. But usually, after making, I don't know, a dozen of these by now, put them on all bows, rip them off again if I didn't like them, put them back on. Now I was confident that I found a way that I really liked. This is why I'm sharing it today. And you get really quick after a while doing this, as with everything. All right, so we just built a functional clicker that's very light, lighter than the original, um, despite all this duct tape, that is very low key, as you can hopefully see. And it's absolutely working. Let's give it another go here. Coil, pull in the back, anchor, boom, there it goes. So now, in case you're realizing that something went wrong and you're having one of these days, whatever, you're changing your form, um, your, your draw length changes, you're changing your anchor, whatever it is. Now you can take this entire system here on your string, the two little, um, the two little um, knots, and of course your loop, and you can slide it up and down the string. It's not going to move by itself. The tension on here, whatever, the one pound or whatever you need to engage this clicker, is not going to be enough to drag the stuff up and down. But it's going to allow you to make your, your click engagement or your clicker engagement at a different draw length, because the further you slide it up, the more pull you need in order, because this distance here is not as wide as the distance down here when you pull, because the string is going to make an angle like this, right? So the further you slide it up, the, the further you have to pull to click it, and the further you push it down, the quicker it's going to engage. You know, because the string is of course at an angle like this, so the distance down here between here and the string at full draw, and up here between the string and full draw, is going to be very different. So, this is pretty much it, folks. I'm really happy with this. This is something I really wanted to do for a long time. It's going to be a lot of rambling. I hope I didn't annoy anybody. I hope I didn't step on anybody's toes. This is it. Um, again, the clicker is a great thing. It's checking my draw length. I know it's the same every single time. Great for hunting. And I can just concentrate on pull and pushing my scapula down and into my spine. And then when I hear this click, it just flies off um, with my back rather than like opening or st like stalling or collapsing, whatever it is. If you like this video, um, thank you very much for watching, first of all. If you like this video, let me know. 
Um, I like keeping the language really clean and nice down in the description box just because, you know, I always find like free content isn't really free. Hashtag free content isn't free. Um, the people who put content out there, they sometimes have something in the back of their mind trying to sell a product, whatever it is. But on the other hand, they also bring in knowledge and skills and whatever to a lot of people and they're putting 10, 20 hours into a video sometimes. Um, camera equipment, etc, etc. So I think this is just a great mutual experience. Um, if you like the video, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's a suggestion, let me know if you found something else that works for you. Um, let me know what you think in general um, about modern trad. Um, and as I said, I think the traditional archery um, uh, um, community is a place where everybody just tries to not grow up and just relive those um, first moments when they were children, um, getting fascinated by bows and arrows, seeing movies, etc. So it should not be, this for all places in our life should not be something where we just, um, you know, getting into each other's um, faces. And um, there's enough other places in our lives where that's happening. So that's why I like keeping it clean, keeping it fun. And at the end of the day, we all just love seeing a beautiful arrow twist or spin rather, hopefully not twist, but spin towards the target. And that's why we're out here. So yeah, let's get this thing engaged and fire some shots um, in the last light today here in this foggy, gloomy, beautiful forest. Stay safe and I'm gonna see you next time. Cheers.